mast cells. <laughs> that might be a better place to start really quickly. And that is, uh, so we are talking about cells of your immune system. These are part of what they call the innate immune system. So they're always there. They're always kind of hanging out around blood vessels, around the gut, under the skin. They're always just chilling out, waiting for stuff to get weird. And they're waiting to help you and protect you from pathogens or parasites or allergens or some sort of exposure that they deem a threat. So really, when we're talking about mast cells, we're talking about one type of immune cell that is always going to be in your body. It's always going to be there. The goal is not to be free of mast cells. But the key is that you want them to be reasonably calm or pacified. And an analogy, I don't think it was in reference to mast cells, but I think it was Karazian actually said something about like, oh, no, it was microglia, but I think it still stands. He likened microglia, and I'm going to borrow this from mast cells, and say that they can kind of be like really irritable chihuahuas with bazookas. Yeah. And if you think about it, like you want your chihuahuas to be chill and like taking a nap and wearing a cute little sweater around your house. You don't want chihuahuas that are barking at everything and nipping at people's ankles and like shooting stuff with bazookas. And that's what irritated, hypervigilant, degranulated mast cells are kind of like. Like they're just, they're like offloading their stuff on everybody. And it doesn't make for a whole lot of fun for the person who has those mast cells. So that's kind of the way to think of them for a starting point. Yeah, no, I think it's a, I think that was a really good summary because I think sometimes people are like, oh, mast cells are bad. Histamine's bad. But like there is a need for histamine and there is a need for mast cells in the body. It's always important to to remember that it's just kind of, you want to make sure they're regulated in a, in a good way so that they're not kind of overactive, like what you're describing with the chihuahua. As these cells make chemicals like histamine, it will naturally suppress the other side of the immune system because your body assumes that you need like full steam ahead. If you have a parasite, you don't want to have a little bit of a parasite response. You want to have the biggest, most intense anti-parasitic response ever. So you have these mechanisms where like one side of the immune system, when it's activated, will naturally suppress the other side. But then that's where people can sometimes get stuck. Like their, their immune system might not get the memo to kind of cool it back off and chill out again. And those mast cells are still spewing their guts and getting, you know, the bazookas or whatever. And they're still going bananas. But a lot of the mast cell uh, symptoms and a lot of histamine intolerant symptoms will closely mirror that of an allergic response. So things yeah. like food allergies, environmental allergies and phlegm and mucus, um, you know, things like asthma, eczema, hives, migraines, a lot of these have like allergic foundations to them. And yeah. part of that picture is the mast cell piece of it. But there are other cells involved, just to be clear. Yeah. It's like a whole side of the equation. You know, looking at some of the root causes of IBS that you, we can think of, like SIBO, um, stress, uh, infections, yeah. um, Leaky gut. you know, toxins, like uh, it, it's not surprising that there is a link between IBS and mast cell yeah. histamine issues when you kind of look at what drives histamine to be in higher concentrations. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.